to the precipitation presentation. Uh, we're going to be talking about precipitation in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, an essential statement, precipitation falls in regions where moist air tends to rise, producing precipitation. What is precipitation? Precipitation is any form of water that falls from a cloud to the Earth's surface. Don't forget about hail. We have drizzle, rain, sleet, dry snow, and wet snow. What are condensation nuclei? Condensation nuclei are microscopic particles like dust in the air on which water vapor condenses to form cloud droplets. Condensation cannot take place without condensation nuclei. So pollutants, dust, dirt, sand in the air, you have water vapor that surrounds it. When the air reaches its dew point, the gas will condense onto the condensation nuclei forming a water droplet or a cloud droplet. The larger that droplet gets, the better chance it has to fall to the Earth's surface as precipitation. How do water droplets form? Uh, water vapor condenses into liquid water when air, an air parcel reaches its dew point. So the dew point is when condensation occurs. That's a temperature. Air cools as it rises in the atmosphere, causing condensation. The water vapor actually condenses from gas to a liquid on a piece of condensation nuclei. So you can see here, surface temperature 92 degrees, dew point 60 degrees. As the air rises, pressure reduces, the air parcel expands, its volume increases, its temperature decreases. Again, moving up further to 6,000 feet, okay, you have the air parcel getting less dense, reaching its dew point temperature, condensation taking place. Over here, the sun heats the surface of the earth. The surface of the earth warms the air. The air that is warm rises. As it rises, condensation takes place to form clouds and ultimately precipitation. How do water droplets grow? Water droplets grow by bumping into one another uh, and combining. The droplets do not fall to the earth until they become large enough or heavy enough to defy gravity. So here you can see your average size or typical cloud droplet, very small, suspended in the air, not falling because of the updrafts. When they grow in size, they start to fall. And when they grow large, they are combining with other water droplets on their way down to the Earth's surface, as you can see in the graphics. What are five different kinds of precipitation we need to know? Drizzle, raindrops, snow, sleet, and hail. Okay, here's some weather symbols. Uh, they depict these different types of precipitation. All right, so those are the ones that you will need to know. How do we measure precipitation? So rainfall is measured using a rain gauge. So a rain gauge is just like a glass that has some graduated markings on it where you can measure uh, in milliliters uh, or other measurement components. Here you have uh, an actual rain gauge stuck to a fence post or a post out in the field that collects rainwater, and then you can use these uh, graduations to measure. Snowfall is measured using a measuring stick, as you can see here. Uh, where, does where does precipitation occur on Earth? Precipitation occurs in every part of the world. Some places have no precipitation for years. In other locations, precipitation occurs almost every day. Okay, so you can see we'll start here near the equator. Okay, near the equator, uh, you can see there's lots of purple. Okay, and if you come down here to the key, um, this is the mean annual precipitation in centimeters. All right, so down here more than 250 centimeters. Uh, and then it works its way down with the varying color. So at the equator, you can see that there are uh, lots of purple, which is more than 250 centimeters, and light purple. Okay, so these regions in between the tropics receive uh, significant amounts of precipitation. Okay, so up here, cold air sinks near the North Pole. This area is dry. So sinking air uh, does not cause precipitation. South Pole, same thing. Sinking air does not cause much precipitation or any. Uh, air near the equators rises, equatorial areas are usually wet. Okay. Now over here we have some mountain ranges. So mountains cause air to rise. So they have to rise over the mountain, causing air to cool, condense, precipitate on the windward side of the mountain. And then you can see the leeward side of the mountain ranges is, is actually dry. 
because the water was forced out. Same thing happens over here on the windward side of the mountain range. Okay, you can see another graphic here that depicts centimeters and precip or excuse me, inches in precipitation. All right, some of the same patterns. These same patterns are found here in this graphic as well. What is the main cause of precipitation? The rising and cooling of moist air is the main cause of precipitation. How does air rise? Why does air rise? Air rises when it is heated. Uh, the sun heats the surface of the earth. The surface of the earth heats the air directly touching the surface or above the surface. That air rises. As that air rises, other cooler air replaces it. Okay, So cool air replaces it, continues to rise as that air rises. It cools. Cool air holds less water than warm air, causing condensation. So the vapor is forced out of the air, causing clouds. Air also rises because it is forced to rise as it passes over a mountain range or a high elevation areas of high elevation. So as it rises, it cools, forcing the water vapor to condense, to precipitate out. And then you can notice the, the leeward side of the mountain then is dry because the precipitation has been forced out on the windward side. What does hot air do? Hot air rises, okay? As it rises, it cools, okay? And then it moves and it cycles back as cool air. So cool air replaces the hot air, the hot air rises. We use uh, th this uh, strategy to, uh, to um, ride in air balloons or to cause a balloon, a hot air balloon to rise. So you use a gas, you heat the air up, you capture the heated air and the lift is greater than the weight. So the air, the buoyancy of the air, it's less dense, it will rise, it will actually carry uh, the balloon and the passengers up into the air. Hot air balloon. Hot air rises. Why does warm air rise and cool air sink? Warm air is less dense, so it rises. Cool air is more dense, so it sinks. As you can see here, cold air, lots of particles close together, a little bit of movement, okay? Hot air, fewer particles, in the same given area moving much faster so you can see here that the hot air will rise the cool air as it rises temperature decreases okay when temperature decreases uh, it starts to sink again okay so cold air more dense particles closer together warm air less dense particles further apart and more active what happens to temperature as altitude increases? So we've been studying the layers of the atmosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. You guys did a great chart gra uh, um, graphing the temperature change. We live down here in the troposphere. The temperature decreases as altitude increases. Okay, the troposphere is the lowest layer of the atmosphere where 95% of all weather occurs. So you can see that most airplanes fly near the, uh, near the tropopause. Okay, the connect the space between the troposphere and the stratosphere. If you look at temperature here, temperature increases in this direction, decreases in this direction. In the troposphere, as you go higher in altitude, as you increase your altitude, the temperature decreases, causing clouds to form, causing air to cool. When hot air, moist air rises and cools, what happens next? Condensation occurs, clouds form, and precipitation comes. Okay, so when hot air rises, okay, you have uh, water vapor in that air. As it rises, it cools. As it cools, condensation takes place on condensation nuclei. When you get enough water droplets bumping into each other, they get heavy enough to, uh, to break the force of the updrafts and they start to fall back to the earth as precipitation. Okay, so you can see here the sun heats the ground, radiation that. Convection force transfers the heat into the upper atmosphere. The upper atmosphere cools it and causes it to sink again. These are convection cells right here. Where do the warmest temperatures on Earth occur? Okay, as you can see from this particular graphic, the warmest temperatures on Earth occur at the equator and in between the tropics of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The tropics are hot. If there's lots of heat, lots of sun striking the earth directly, warming the surface significantly, that causes air to rise. When air rises, especially hot or warm air, it has lots of water vapor. So it rises quickly up into the atmosphere, it cools quickly, and that's when you start to get thunderstorms, you start to get rainfall, lots of precipitation. Okay, so mean average temperature in between 
the tropics and at the equator you have a high temperature causing significant updrafts or rising of hot air bringing precipitation. Global rainfall. You can see the global rainfall correlates with the last map of temperature. So this is rainfall, not temperature, and the red areas have significant rainfall, the purple areas even more. And you can see uh, that we do have a strong pattern of significant rainfall at the equator and in between the tropics. What topographic feature can force water vapor out of the air? mountain ranges or areas of high elevation. So as air moves towards the mountain range, the prevailing wind forces it up. As the air rises, it cools. The condense or the water vapor in the water is forced out through condensation. So you get lots of precipitation on the on the windward side of the mountain. And then this is the dry side of the mountain. Okay, so the leeward side of the mountain. There's not much water vapor left in the air and therefore only small amounts of precipitation happen on the leeward side of the mountain range. Okay, in summary, when air rises in altitude, it cools. Cooler air holds less water vapor. Water vapor is forced out of the air because it's cool. Condensation occurs on condensation nuclei. Water vapor turns into liquid. Liquid water droplets bump into one another and combine forming larger water droplets. Larger water droplets are heavier. Gravity pulls the heavy water droplets or snow or hail or sleet or drizzle to the Earth's surface. This is called precipitation. This process is called the water cycle. Okay, so you can see some graphics here of the water cycle. Okay, evaporation, condensation, movement, precipitation. And then you have water soaking back into the earth and running back to uh, downhill, down elevation, back to the lowest points, the oceans, the rivers, and the lakes. Okay? All right, that's precipitation in Earth's atmosphere. Well done. Okay. So watching the presentation on precipitation is not enough to uh, learn the information, especially just one time. Watching it multiple times can help, but also to learn the information, you can use a study tool like Cornell Notes. So I've created a set of Cornell Notes for myself that I'll share with you, okay? And as you can see, Cornell Notes or two-column notes are meant to be folded. So you can tell when they're really being used if you fold them, all right? So for example, if I want to study what precipitation is, what is condensation nuclei, how do water droplets form? This is information that I'm going to need to know, and I can quiz myself, okay? I have a backside also, okay? What topographic land feature can force water vapor out of the air, all right? So using this study tool is important, okay? And it will help you learn it, all right? Thank you very much. I'm going to provide a copy to you. Use it to succeed.